guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Thursday, which means it's time for a magic stuff. Now today, I'm going to be doing another in the three best tricks series. And today I'm doing three tricks with an expanded shell that you have never seen before. Three tricks with an expanded shell that you have never seen before. Uh, and I'm talking about obviously an expanded coin shell. Uh, now, for those of you that uh, are new to coin magic, what an expanded shell is, basically, it is a, 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 a hollowed out gimmick, basically, a hollowed out coin that fits on top of another coin um, that allows you to display two coins. And when the shell is nested over the coin, you can display one coin. Uh, as much as I'm known as, uh, you know, somebody who uses the flipper, and I always will use the flipper, and I love the flipper, and I also use and love the split coin, there is so much that you can do with an expanded shell. And I've performed and created many, many routines with an expanded shell. One of the best, if not the best, coin routine, coins across in the world, is David Roth's Coins Across from Expert Coin Magic, which uses a shell. Um, there's so much that you can do with it. Now, just so you know, just to give you a frame of reference, the, some people ask me what's the difference between an expanded and an unexpanded shell. An expanded shell is a shell that is bigger than a coin. So if you had a half dollar expanded shell, it would be a shell that would be designed to fit over any half dollar. The, shell is, the coin is expanded as the shell is made to fit over any coin. If you have a, uh, an unexpanded shell or normal shell, it's designed to fit over coins that are milled down specifically to fit inside that shell. Um, an example of this is Jamie Cool Schoolcraft's Dean set, uh, which was named and created uh, by Dean Dilk, uh, made by Jamie Schoolcraft, but based on ideas and routines by Dean Dill, which is a set of four coins which are milled down to fit into a shell, specifically those four coins. Uh, there's no right or wrong. The one thing that I will say about using a shell is that you want to make sure that you use a shell that looks good. If you get yourself a cheap shell, and I've seen people use cheap shells before, you can spot it a mile off that it's a shell. If you look at it from the side, it looks like it's a shell. It looks like there's something going on. A good shell will achieve coverage over the whole of the side of the coin. And you can look at it from either side and it will look as good from either side. Whether the shell is up or down, it will look just as good. Now, there's millions of routines with the shell. Uh, lots and lots of routines. Um, David Roth has put a lot of stuff together with shells. So how's Troy Hooser? You can you can check out a lot of Troy's stuff. He's got some great stuff with the shell. Dean Dill obviously has got some amazing work with the shell. Lots of other people have as well. Uh, I'm going to be presenting with you three tricks that you've never seen before. Now, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, two of the tricks are mine, and they are currently unpublished. Um, uh, they I think there might have been an ebook that is massively out of date and out of print now and you can't get it anymore but they've never been put on a project but two of those are mine based on classic routines and we'll get more into that in a bit and the other one is by the late great Jeff Latter I've spoken about the Jeff Latter trick before um, but it is so good and it's the perfect example of a, sh of a routine with a shell I wanted to include it in this series as well so I think I mentioned it in a five by five once I'm including it in this series again if you guys want to know more about expanded shells there's a couple of things that I'm going to be doing moving forward into 2022 I'm going to be doing the hows and whys of the shell uh, I did a hows and whys series on the flipper coin which was very well received I'm going to do the hows and whys of the shell and I'm also going to do another one of these three best trick series um, on on the shell as well. So three more tricks with the shell that you've never seen before. But on this video, I'm going to perform and talk about three tricks using a shell that you have never seen before that are absolutely killer. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first trick is uh, my version of David Roth's portable hole. Now, portable hole is one of the things that made me fall in love with David's style of magic. If you don't know what the portable hole is, it's the idea of having a felt hole, right? And you have a purse frame. And David's routine was to take the coins out of a purse frame, make them very cleanly disappear into a, uh, into a felt hole. And he, he justified this by saying it was, a, it was a portable hole. They went back into the purse. And there was a whole bunch of stuff that happened. Amazing routine. First of all, so much you can learn from this trick. The use of props, the use of a hook line. Uh, you know, this came when there were very few plots in coin magic and David Roth was coming out with some incredible stuff at the time. Um, uh, the eraser, rainbow, uh, the sleeve, 
so many really unique concepts with coin magic. And this is a perfect example of taking coins along with other props to achieve something that's brilliant. So th that was the first thing. It was an incredible hook. It was a great use of props other than the coins. The other thing that was uh, really great about it was the construction of the routine and uh, the way that it was put together. And, and it looked so clean. And when you saw David perform something like this, you were absolutely blown away. Now let's talk about the disadvantages. One of the big disadvantages of this routine, and this is a similar disadvantage to a lot of David's performance piece magic, uh, in that it can only really be performed sitting down behind a table, which is great for magic conventions, and so, but nowhere doesn't work for where I perform. And, uh, you know, you, you would, there was a, quite a lot of lapping in the routine. Uh, as well as lapping, there was quite a lot of, uh, uh, you know, like impasses and, and, and moves where you're moving something into classic palm from the lap as you're, you're doing other stuff. And it, it just made it very, very impractical for me to perform. But I love the routine so much I wanted to perform it. Now, I do a lot of walk around magic, but I also do a lot of work where I have a close up pad. I don't mind learning routines where I have a close up pad. Um, uh, that's not too much of a problem for me. I do a lot of parlor shows and in a parlor show, I have a close up mat in front of me. Um, I also have, uh, you know, uh, in the past I've done banquet and if I know that I'm gonna have space, I'll have like a little close up pad that I use in banquet. Um, this particular routine that I'm gonna share with you, my version of portable hole, it's, it doesn't require any lapping. So you can do it standing up but you do need to have a close-up pad or a soft surface. Now I have got variations of this that have been designed to be done walk around, but I wanted to share with you my favorite way that I actually do this. Uh, this is in most of my parlor shows. This is in most of my formal close-up shows. And uh, a lot of the time when I'm doing, you know, bar stuff or things like that, I'll do this as well. Um, you need a, you need a close-up pad or you need something, you need a soft surface. So if I'm doing a bar, a bar, towel sort of thing would work absolutely fine um but other than that there's no other problems with it it's not like i'm needing to lap or sit down or constantly go to my uh go to my pockets um and i've, I've achieved this through the use of a shell so uh, david's routine just used regular coins and there were no gimmicks in play i'm using a shell um in order to eliminate any trips into my lap if that makes sense so i'm going to perform this for you right now and then we'll talk about why i think you should learn it so I'm going to uh, let you, my wife, Sarah, who's behind the camera and everyone who's watching in on the real secrets of doing magic, um, because everyone thinks it's to do with sleight of hand. It's not. Uh, it's about really cool gimmick toys that you can buy when you're a magician. There's actually magic shops you can buy this from. Let me give you an example. I'm going to get back to that in a minute. First thing you need if you're going to be a magician, especially if you're going to be a coin magician, is one of these. Now, this is an invisible purse. Now, the whole thing's not invisible. If it was, you'd never see it. But the bag is invisible, which means that anything inside the bag is invisible as well until you take it out. Now, magicians use these to make coins appear. So what you do is you take the purse, you open up the purse, you reach inside. And when you do reach inside, you can pull a coin out from there. That's an American half dollar. Uh, that's a pure silver Kennedy half dollar. Now, the thing is, these uh, these little uh, coin purses, these little invisible purses, they hold more than one coin. So if I want another one, I just have to reach inside and I can take another coin out as well. That's coin number two. So if you see what I mean, you don't actually need to be able to do sleight of hand with coins. You just need one of these little coin purses with an invisible bag and then you can make it look like you can make coins appear like a true coin master. Now, that's the one thing that you need. The other thing you need is this. Now, this looks like a piece of felt, but it's actually a portable hole. It's designed to look like a piece of felt, but this is a portable hole, like in the Acme movies um, with the Roadrunner. And basically what it means is anything you drop inside that little hole will disappear. Because the other thing you need to be able to do as a coin magician is make things disappear. Well, you know, you could use sleight of hand or you could do this. You just take the coin, you drop it into the hole, and when you drop it into the hole, it disappears completely. It eliminates the need for any sleight of hand. Now that leaves us with uh, with two coins. Let's use this one. Do the same thing. You see, you just drop 
drop it right there into the hole. And when you do, the second one goes. The last one goes the same way as well. All you do is you just take it and you drop it right there into the hole. And the last one goes inside. Now, the interesting thing is there's a connection between the hole and the invisible purse, which means once you drop them inside the hole, they're automatically teleported back inside here so I can reach in and take them out. That's the first one that I dropped inside the hole. Now, it takes a few seconds for them to reach the purse, but if you just wait a couple of seconds, you can get the second one out. Now, if I was going to be using sleight of hand for this, I'd have to take the coin and, you know, like maybe sneak it underneath when you weren't looking. That's what I'd have to do. But with this, I don't have to do that. That's the, that's the beautiful thing. Two coins have disappeared and they've gone into the hole and come out the purse. There was one other coin and that goes exactly the same way. Now, if you're going to start to learn to do magic and you're going to get yourself one of these invisible coins, uh, sorry, one of these invisible purses and one of these portable holes, the other thing that you need to know is to never throw the coin in too hard into the uh, portable hole. Let me explain why. We'll use this coin. I'll throw it in really hard. Now, if I throw this one in really hard, it looks like it works because obviously we've only got two coins left. But what's happened is it's actually gone all the way through the hole to the, uh, to the table below, and you don't want that, and that's a different trick. And, and it'll happen every single time. I go really hard. If I just do that really hard, it'll happen every single time. I mean, it looks like I've made it disappear, but in reality, it's right there underneath the hole. So, well, just for fun, let's see if we can do this last one. Watch. One, two, three. Just like that. You're not going to believe it. Hopefully, underneath that hole now... We have all three coins. Now, there is one other element to this that you probably didn't realize that you need to know in that uh, there's an extra coin. Now, you probably didn't see the extra coin. A lot of people don't see the extra coin because I was keeping it hidden the whole time. But it's very easy to spot when you know what it looks like because uh, it's a little bit bigger than the rest. And that is the portable hole. So there you go. So that's the portable hole. I love performing that routine. I really do. Um, so, first of all, why should you learn this? Why should you perform this? Well, first of all, it's a super engaging plot, like it really is. Uh, I love saying, hey, you don't have to do sleight of hand, you can use these gimmicks. Um, also, my routine varies from David's in the construction, in that there's less phases, um, but, but the phases that I've kept are my favourite phases in the routine. I love the opening production out of the purse, and if you go back and you watch the performance again, you'll see that my hands are shown empty every time I go to open up the purse and take another coin out. And don't underestimate how magical that is to a layman when you're opening up an invisible purse and taking a coin out. Then if you go back and look at the first section where I drop the coins into the purse, uh, sorry, into the hole, it's designed so that it's a complete vanish every single time my hands are empty. And then you've got the moment where you bring them back out of the uh, purse again. And again, you're showing your hands empty. Then you put them back into the hole. And again, your hands are being shown empty. But as you do, one at a time, they're going underneath the hole. It's all really well constructed together. And each phase builds. Now, I included a jumbo coin kicker at the end. Because it just makes sense to me to have a jumbo coin appear underneath that portable hole. I know that David Roth in his book, Expert Coin Magic, and also in Richard Zalmanyak, I think it was, Richard Jalmanyak, where this was first written up, or it might have been Coin Magic by Kaufman. Uh, he talks about not having a jumbo coin and resist the temptation to have a jumbo coin. And for years, I didn't use a jumbo coin. And then I thought, well, let me just try and see what it is. It, it, honestly, it just brings the whole, circle, the whole trick full circle. I understand what David's talking about, but I respectfully disagree. I think having that jumbo coin there is such a great way to end it. And it also makes sense. And it's very easy to load that coin underneath the, uh, underneath the, um, the, the portable hole with the phase previously being turning the thing over to show that the coins are under there. It's almost like a cups and balls style thing, if that makes sense. Um, it packs a punch whenever I perform this to real people. This is the trick that they talk about, like for sure, every single time. This is the trick they talk about. And it's not that hard to do. I mean, it's not going to be something that you can do overnight, but it's not ridiculously difficult. Um, and if you don't know the kick move, which was the, uh, the move David Roth put together for the original uh, portable hole, it's such a great move with so many applications. You know, you, you'll you see it in this routine. It's such a great move, it really is. Um, and I've used that in my work throughout the years, right back to my very first release, which was Attack of the Bag, where I used it in there and a couple of different routines. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's the portable hole routine. 
If you've got yourself a shell and you've got yourself some half dollars, it's a great routine to learn. It's a great routine to practice. And, you know, if I was ever going to enter the competitions again, I'd probably go with this trick because uh, it's one that it, magicians really kind of like, but also at the same time, laymen like it as well. There's a lot of um, visual moments, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's a real worker. And also everything's examinable at the end. So when you've finished it and you're left with the three coins on the table, all three of those coins are examinable and it takes two seconds to reset. So as long as you're in a situation where you actually have a way of actually performing this on a table, then this is a real working routine. Obviously, it's not going to be for every environment, but it's a routine that you can perform quite a lot. And uh, the, the fact that you can do this version without actually sitting down uh, makes it you know, a lot more workable. So the second routine I want to show you is Jeff Latter's three coin trick. Now, I remember the first time I saw Jeff Latter do the three coin trick. It was on the New York Coin Guys Volume 1 Coins Across. I'm pretty sure it was Volume 1. Um, and if you don't know what that was, that's a set of DVDs that was put together by Michael Rubenstein, uh, David Roth, um, Jeff Latter and uh, Mike Gallo. And the four of them put together a whole bunch. It's so amazing. You have to get it. It's like 15 or 16 DVDs covering every aspect of coin magic. Unfortunately, two of those legends have now passed away. Uh, David Roth, rest in peace. And obviously, Jeff Latter, rest in peace. Um, but, you know, Jeff Latter's legacy remains. It really does. And this is a perfect example of Jeff's clever thinking. When I saw this, I was absolutely blown away. Um, it's basically uses a shell, hence, hence being included in this video, but it's so, there's so much economy of motion. This is a routine I do when I've got a lot of people to get round and I just want to do a routine that's got a lot of moments of magic. Because you're about to see the trick in a second, I'm gonna perform it for you. And there's something like 15 to 20 moments of magic in this routine um, over a two or a three minute period. So if you're doing like banquet tables, um, or restaurant magic or something like that, and you're walking over to the table and you want to do something that grabs their attention, this is absolutely perfect. And we're going to see so much magic in such a short period of time. And there's so many things in there that Jeff has included in this that are so clever. So let me perform it for you first of all. I'm going to perform the whole routine for you so you can see exactly how it looks. And then we'll, uh, we'll talk about why it's so good. So I'm going to show you something with a piece of nothing. Right here, this is a piece of nothing. I want to watch this piece of nothing. If I take it and shake it, I can shake the invisibility off. That's a silver American dollar. Now, maybe you didn't know what was going to happen. I'll do it again. The second coin is right there. Again, you can't see it until I go up and down like this. And that's the second coin. That's coin number two. So we have one here, one here. But all good things come in pairs. There is actually a third coin. It's right there. There you go. So that's one. Hang on, two. So I thought I had three coins. Sorry. There's two coins here. The third coin is right there. There you go. That's one. Okay, that's weird. I'm sorry. There's two coins here. The third coin will appear right at the tips of my uh, fingers. Oh, these fingers over here. There you go. The tips of these fingers. And now we've got three coins. I can begin the trick. Now, the idea of the trick is very simple. The coins go over here like this. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do before I do it. One at a time. I'm going to make these coins jump. They're going to go up the sleeve. They're going to go across the chest, down the other sleeve, into this hand. That's what's going to happen. So when I shake like this, hopefully with any luck, the first coin's gone across. That's coin number one. Now, some people say to me, well, hang on a second. Did you go up your sleeve? And I didn't. I don't even actually have sleeves. The second coin, I'll hold this at the tips of the fingers. It acts like a magnet to get that second coin to jump across to join it. That's coin number two. Now, remember the situation. There's two over here. There's one over here. The last one happens when I blow, and that's all three coins across. So the coins have appeared. They have jumped from one place to another. There is one last thing to do, and that's make these coins disappear. So the first coin, if I just take it and squeeze it into nothing, I can put it right there and have that coin disappear again. That leaves us with two. The second coin goes exactly the same way. You know exactly what's going to happen here. I just squeeze it into nothing and hang it right there. That's coin number two. This last one's the hardest one, the lot. It kind of jumps around a little bit. If I put it up here, it jumps down there. If I put it up here, it jumps down here. If I put it over here, it jumps over here. Very difficult to make this last coin jump across. Very difficult. The only way to make this last coin disappear is to squeeze it really tightly into nothing. And that is all three coins disappeared. 
So there you go, that's the, that's the three coin trick. And uh, first of all, it's super practical. There's not really any angle issues to speak of. Second of all, uh, it's very easy to get into because you're only using two coins in a shell. Uh, you're not even using three coins. You're using two coins in a shell. I have the shelled coin in my right pocket. I have the regular coin in my left pocket. When I want to do the routine, I go in, I palm them, and I'm ready to go. So it's very, very practical because when you've finished it, five seconds and you can reset it ready to go again. That's it. Just five seconds and you can reset it. Um, and there's lots of really visual eye candy. Move after move after move after move. And the thing goes full circle. So you start off with this really wonderful production when just when you produce the third coin, one of the other coins disappear and you produce the third coin and the other coin disappear. You end up with that. So just the production, the first 30 seconds, you've got like 10 or 15 moments of magic. Then you go into the coins across. I love the coins across segments because the three coins go into your hand. You make a fist. You make them go from one hand to the other. But there's no like moves where you're, uh, you know, like holding one coin back or anything like that. Uh, the moments that the coins are actually stolen out are covered under misdirection and naturalness moment movement so well. It's so fluid. And you have to learn this trick just to learn one move that is so useful. And I see hardly anyone doing this move, and it's so good. Uh, Jeff, uh, the final coin. So you've got apparently one coin here and two coins here. In actual fact, you've got two coins in a shell. Jeff has this wonderful routine that when he blows, you end up with three coins. And it's a way of actually straddling the coins and unnesting the coin into a fan with one hand. And I've incorporated that into so many routines in my work and it works so well. And, you know, I don't see hardly anyone doing that move and it's a really useful move to learn. Um, and then you've got the vanish sequence. You've got the sequence at the end where all the coins vanish. And again, just like with the portable hole, it feels like a complete vanish. The first one vanishes because of the shell. The second one vanishes because of edge grip. And then you've got that really nice sequence um, where you're ditching the coin into your top pocket as you're doing this final sequence. And then you've got the final coin, which feels like a complete vanish as well. It runs full circle. And you don't need a jumbo coin or anything with this, uh, like this. It's like, boom, coins appear. They jump from one place to another. They disappear. After three or four minutes, you've established so much credibility. It's why this makes such a good opener. A lot of time when I do this, I use it as an opener because you establish credibility very early on. You know, don't underestimate the power of making a coin appear at the tips of the fingers. Some magicians will go, oh, it's no good, you know, making coins appear, that's so old hat. Trust me, there's nothing more magical for people than seeing a coin just appear at the tips of the fingers. And then you see a second one, then you see a third one. It establishes credibility, it shows you're very good at what you do. There's lots of really super visual magic and uh, everything comes full circle at the end when it disappears. As I say, it almost instantly resets. Uh, it's not examinable, but there's no time to examine them. The coins are appearing, they're jumping, they're disappearing. There's no time to examine everything, anything. And if you wanted to, you could structure it by having the coins examined at different points in the routine. But to be honest, I think that would lose the flow of what's actually trying to be achieved here. Um, so yeah, it's called Jeff Latter's Three Coin Trick. You can learn it from the New York Coin Guys Volume 1, which is on Coins Across. You can also learn it from Jeff's book. I think it's a... Uh, I want to say Long Kiss Goodnight, but I think that's a film. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, a, it's Jeff Latter's final book. Please look out for it. Uh, it's a great book anyway that you should definitely learn. Uh, but this, this routine. And an earlier version of this routine, uh, I think was published in Spectacle by Stephen Minch. And I think it was called From the Elvin Horde. From memory, and again, I'm going from memory here, so I might be wrong. But it's three coin trick. You can definitely learn it from his latest book, his last book, and you can also learn it from the, um, yeah, from the. Uh, what am I talking about? You can also learn it from the DVD by the New York Coin Guys, and the best person to speak to about that, I imagine, is uh, Michael Rubenstein. But anyway, there you go. The three coin trick, perfect walk around trick, perfect parlor trick, perfect formal close up show trick. It's just a perfect coin trick, and it's a perfect use of how you can incorporate a shell into a routine and get the maximum amount of impact out of it. Like that shell is being used throughout the routine in so many subtle ways that make the routine, you couldn't do a routine like this without the shell. And it's a perfect example of how a shell should be used correctly during the course of a coin routine. 
So the final routine we're going to be looking at is another one of mine, and again, this is unpublished, and this is my version of Twilight, or one of my versions of Twilight, by Paul Harris. So what is Twilight? Now, if you haven't seen Twilight before, it's one of uh, Paul's quintessential coin tricks, quintessential tricks. Uh, the whole idea is it's normally a formal piece done on table, and the whole idea is that you have a, uh, you have a little mur a mirror, and uh, you have a coin in front of the mirror and they see two coins and when you move the mirror away there are actually two coins and it's that whole sequence of making coins appear and disappear into the mirror and you can have that beautiful moment where you pull the mirror back so you, you see one coin and then you, you see two because you see the reflection and then there are two and you move the mirror away. It's beautiful but it's very impractical and the reason it's very impractical is because A, you need a table with a close-up pad Second of all, depending on the routine that you do, there's quite a lot of lapping. But the other reason is it, it's very angle prone. Um, because you're here, people can't be looking down at it because they'll see the other side of the mirror. People can't be looking at the side because they'll see what's going on on the other side of the mirror. It's, it has to be really just done to in a formal close-up show environment. And I remember learning this trick and thinking, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And I had a very similar thought process with this than as I did with the portable hole. I desperately wanted to perform it. And it was frustrating me that I couldn't perform it because I just loved that moment of uh, the coin coming out the mirror. And I kind of said to myself, I said, what do I love about this routine? And this is something I advise you guys to do as well. What do I love about that routine? And why isn't it workable for me? And I was thinking, well, it's not workable for me because a lot of the time I'm working walk around. I don't even have a table. Um, that's changed these days. But back then I didn't have a table at all. Um, I didn't, I, I, you know, the angles were an issue. Uh, there, were, there were just several problems that made it completely unworkable. And then I, I spent about four years reworking it so that it would work for me in a walk around situation. And what you're about to see is the walk around version of Eclipse. I, I call it the walk around Eclipse because um, I'm not very good at naming tricks. And um, when you're creating magic, there's certain sacrifices sometimes that you have to make. And you know, the sacrifice I had to make with this trick in order to make it walk around, I had to have everything happen in my hand. So there's certain sequences that I couldn't include. So, you know, I haven't got the sequence here where there's a mirror and you see a coin and you move the mirror and now you see two and you pull it away because that wouldn't work. Well, it might have worked, but then that would take away from the main focus of what I wanted this routine to do, which was to work in a walk around situation where I'm kind of almost surrounded. I can do this from almost any angle. So I changed it around and the breakthrough came when I added a shell. And I tried doing it with a split coin, it didn't work as well. And I tried gimmicking a mirror and putting a magnet in it, and that didn't work so well. And I ended up being able to put it together with a shell and a mirror. Now, the mirror you're about to see is just a pocket mirror. All I did is I went and I found myself a credit card sized mirror. So I found a mirror that's the size of a credit card, which makes this routine very practical because you can just put the credit card mirror in your wallet and you're ready to go. And obviously, the use of adding the shell uh, made it. Uh, really practical as well and you'll see that in a minute so let's have a look at a full performance of my version of Eclipse of Twilight sorry let's have a look at my version of Twilight and I'll talk about why I like it so much so people say that magicians um, do magic using smoke and mirrors that's half true it's not smoke but it definitely is mirrors uh, what I have here is a little pocket mirror um, if you were here you could examine it Sarah is behind the, uh, the camera hey Sarah um, and you could examine it if you wanted to, but this is a little pocket mirror. Uh, the other thing that you need is what's inside this purse. Now, this is a coin. It's an American silver half dollar, a pure silver Kennedy half dollar with an eagle on one side and Kennedy on the other. And this coin, um, for sure, with this coin, you could examine it as well if you wanted to. But the idea is this is how magicians can make coins by magic. You need to use the mirror. Uh, because the idea is, well, let me explain. If I put this coin here and I put the mirror in front, you can't see that coin, can you? We know it's there, but you can't see it because the mirror is stopping you from seeing it. Does that make sense? Yeah. But if I take the coin and put it in front of the mirror, you can see the coin. But how many coins do you see in the, in the mirror, Sarah? How many coins do you see in total? Well, two in total. You see in total because you see the reflection, don't you? Yeah. The thing is, this is a magic mirror. Whatever happens in the reflection, whatever happens in the mirror actually becomes real. So what I mean by that is because you can see two, naturally, there are two coins. 
It's kind of weird. Now, maybe you missed it, so I'm going to do it again. I would then give you these two coins to uh, hold, examine, touch, whatever you want to do. We'll do it again. So there's my mirror. If I take one coin and put one coin right there in front of the mirror, you actually see two. Yeah. And because you see two, the mirror actually makes a second coin appear. That's one. That's two. You see, this is how magicians make money. I can do this over and over again. All I have to do is put a coin there, take the mirror, put the coin in front of the mirror, wait a split second. That's when the mirror does its thing. I take it away and now I've got two coins. That's how magicians make money. But you can also make coins disappear exactly the same way. Let me show you what I mean. If I put the mirror here and put this coin behind with the other one, you know there's two coins behind the mirror. If I take these two coins and put them in front of the mirror, you know there's four in total, two in front, two behind. And you see four, you see two here, you see two in the reflection. But the interesting thing is if I take one of these coins away, wait a split second, what happens is because you only see two here, we only end up with two, one here, one here. It is the weirdest thing I have ever seen. Now I'm gonna do this again. We've got two coins here and we've got a third coin here. Now, if I put, let me show you, the mirror in between these two. We know there's two, because you see two. If I put these two behind, we know there's two behind. If I put this one in front, you only see two. Because you only see two, there really are only two. Like, I could keep doing this again and again and again. But let's see if we can make uh, the next one disappear as well. Watch. Two coins. Now, I'm going to go really slowly so you know I'm not cheating. We know there's two coins. Make sure I don't do anything sneaky or dodgy. You know there's two coins. Now, if I put one coin behind, there's two behind, you don't see any. If I put that coin back in front, you see two, which is obviously what there is. The interesting thing is if I take one of these coins away, you don't see anything. And because you don't see anything, there's nothing to see in the mirror. Mm -hmm. It's kind of strange, really. The last one's the hardest one the lot. Watch the last coin. I'm going to try and make that last coin go inside the mirror and stay inside that mirror dimension. One, two, three. And that's that final coin right there inside the mirror. All four coins are in there and you can have a look at that and see if you can get it out. So that's Twilight and uh, my version of Twilight anyway. And this is the mirror. As I said, it's a credit card size mirror. And what I've done with this routine is, and it's taken me years to get to this point. Uh, my friend Nemid Phoenix, who I've spoken about on the channel an awful lot, he will tell you that when I first came up with this, or when, not even then, probably a few years into actually coming up with this, it was so convoluted. There were so many phases. It was very difficult to follow, both for me as the performer and also for the spectators. They kind of lost interest a bit. And I think that's an important lesson to learn from creating. When you've created the trick, you have to work it in the real world because if you don't work it in the real world, you won't know if it's worked or not. This has got to where it is by me performing it in the real world all the time. Now, I know I'm sitting down here, but when I actually do this, I'm standing up, you know, I, I hand the coins to the spectator, which is really nice because all the coins that I'm handing to them are regular coins and they feel like they're looking at all the coins. But the, the, the breakthrough here is with this display. So it's the display of having the mirror here and having a coin uh, behind the mirror. OK, so you show a coin and you have the mirror here. And then you put the coin in front and you say, can you see the reflection? And they say yes. And you take the mirror away and the, the coin's there. Or you put the mirror here, you put the coin behind and you say, look, there's two behind. If I put one in front, now there's one, there's two. One in the mirror, one here, one here. But, you know, you get the idea. Take this one away, everything disappears. Uh, this moment here of holding the mirror in this position is pretty much angle proof because you'll notice when I'm doing it, I'm keeping this hand here. Now, that blocks everybody from my right. Everybody. Now, the only bad angle is from the extreme left. And I can manage that because if somebody's looking from the extreme left, I can just say, hey, come around here. You're not going to see anything here. You need to look into the reflection in the mirror. Uh, if people are looking from that side, it's not an issue because I've got this hand here blocking the entire time. So this and, and because of how this is held and my thumb is in place, even if somebody's looking from above, they're not going to see anything. Even if somebody's looking from behind, they're not going to see anything. So now suddenly we have this lovely moment where we can show a coin and we can have that coin in front and we get two coins. Um, and as I say, the breakthrough came when I started using a shell. And um, the other breakthrough, I was originally trying to make the coins appear from the mirror. 
and I'd start off by not having the purse and just having the mirror and making the coins appear but that involved uh, it made the trick 20 times more difficult for that one moment and I spent probably the best part of a year trying to work out a way of making a coin appear from the mirror and I thought well, the best thing to do is just to bring out a purse bring out a coin and go into it from there. It makes the routine so much easier and it eliminates the need for really difficult sleight of hand because what you're seeing here is as close to self-working with coin magic as you're gonna get. There's nothing that's actually difficult, but I'm telling you right now, when laymen watch this routine, they freak out. There's something about a mirror. People know what a mirror is. They see two coins in the mirror. They then see two coins. It doesn't make any sense to them at all. And, and each production, if you actually think about it, all it is is one coin, you produce a second, you produce a third, you produce a fourth, and then one by one you make the four coins disappear. And that's it. But the use of the mirror, which obviously is a uh, Paul Harris genius idea, the use of the mirror along with use, the use of a shell and the use of clever routining uh, means that the routine is almost self-working and gets such a great reaction. Um, I swear by this in walk around. When I'm doing walk around, that's one of my favorite routines to do. Um, especially as an opening routine because when you're doing it as an opening routine and everybody's watching and everyone's paying attention it's like oh my gosh what well, what is this this is just this is just ridiculous and again it establishes credibility it lets people know that you're really really good so there you go that's my version of Twilight by Paul Harris uh, both my tricks are going to be coming out at some point soon I, I want to no, I say soon at some point I want to do a collection of coin routines because I, I, I'm known as a coin guy, but I haven't bought any coin magic out for a long time. I want to bring out a collection of coin routines where I want to call it something like reimagined classics, where I take my versions of classic routines that I've made more practical for a modern performance environment and, and, and go through what I actually do. Uh, with those routines. I don't want to have like seven, eight, nine routines on it, really make it a meaty project. And those two would absolutely for sure go on there. So let me know, would that be something that you guys would be interested in? I'd love to, uh, I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments down below. So there you go, guys. That is another uh, uh, magic stuff in the bag. Another three best things in the bag. Thank you very much for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, you know what you got to do. Just like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again tomorrow at uh, uh, what, it's Friday. I'm going to be here with three videos on Friday, nine o'clock, six o'clock and two o'clock. So make sure that you check those videos out. One more time, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, please leave a comment. I absolutely love reading all of your comments and I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV. <laughs>